It's the bee's knees. All right, everybody. We're here at, back at La Poisson Rouge, and we're with him. And he's got this crazy ass variety comedy magic show. You you name it, and it's all that's going on tonight. He does them on a semi regular basis. And um, so, listen, Tim, wh- where'd you get this idea from, and why do you do it, and what's the inspiration? All right, I I used to do comedy. So I, I did a comedy circuit. I was I was an artist, and I I, I saw the, the the need for a, a supportive environment for artists. New York City is a big city, a city where people can get lost in the shuffle. And I wanted to create an environment where artists, uh, musicians, comedians, uh, magicians, dancers can could all come together and perform in a safe, collaborative, fun environment to showcase their skills and have a good time. So who, who do you have playing tonight? Like, who's up on that stage over there? Tonight we have Curtis, a singer-songwriter from St. Louis. We have Sean Donnelly, a very talented comedian uh, who has regular shows at the Comics. And we have Margo and Matt, a comedy duo who we met. Uh, by doing the set, and they are very talented in doing comedy and music. So, do you, do you, do you have any good knock knock jokes? I, I do not. I like I said, I used to do comedy. Oh, you still? I guess I understand. And, and oh. I was not. I was not very funny, so <laughs> I decided to try something else. All right. Well, fair enough. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And. Um, Rock and roll. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah, hey, so I'm here now with the famous Cardeni, and he is a magician. Everybody loves magicians. I got a couple questions for you. What got you into magic, Cardeni? <coughs> oh, that's disgusting. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's part of my little card guy. Uh, what got me into magic? Uh, high school, uh, somebody on uh, my wrestling team named Nathan Fear, he uh, inspired me with a uh, magic trick, and I begged him to show me how it worked, and finally he showed me after 30 minutes, and I went to the magic shop, ended up working at the magic shop after a few months, and then uh, started doing shows. So, that so, so basically, that guy who taught you how to, how, to, how to do magic, the first trick, he sucked as a magician, he told you the trick. I don't know about all that. <laughs> so, um... Most of the, you ever had a trick that hasn't worked when you're on stage? Oh, it happens all the time. Is it going to happen But tonight? nobody, nobody ever knows when it happens. Oh, seriously? Nobody How do you hide that knows. kind of stuff? Oh, it's great. It's all about the mystery. You know, magic is about the mystery and about getting into people's minds, and that's what I'm about, getting into people's minds and uh, inspiring them for something new, whatever it may be. You know? Do you know the math, the magician? The mask magician? No, the math the magician. The math the magician. Can't say that. No, the math the magician was a show, and he was all teaching about everybody about math, but he did it with magic. Oh, okay. The math the magician. He was like a kid's show. I thought every magician knew the math the magician. I vaguely remember. <laughs> all right. Well, we're looking forward to your set, and thanks for. Uh, for, for speaking to me for a quick second or so, and that was a really disgusting trick. I don't know how you stuck that all down your throat, but right. that's cool. All right, rock and roll, man. This is our first ever Friday night. Woo! And it's raining now, so thank you all for coming out in the rain. And hello to my friends at the table. Hello to all my new friends. Make sure that you mingle tonight, you make new friends, you drink, you eat, and you laugh, because tonight is a great night. And our very first performer I've seen before at the Karma Lounge, he's hilarious. His name is Sean Donnelly, and he has a show at Comics every Saturday at 7. Write it down. He's so funny. All right, give it up for Sean Donnelly. Write it down! Comics! Saturdays at 7. Did you guys bring your pads and your pens? Did you know there would be notes at this thing? I had no idea. How is everybody? Give yourselves a round of applause. You're out here in the rain. We have Tracy Chapman as a DJ. It's very exciting. This is great, Tracy. I'm glad to see you're doing well. How are you? It's good to see you. It's all right, because I, uh, I have this beard, Tracy, okay? I have this beard, and 
People think I grow this beard to look like some sort of hipster or something like that. That's not true. I grow it because without it, I look like Bobby from King of the Hill. <laughs> which is never a good thing to look like. It's never good to have a friend of yours say, you know who you look like from behind? Michael Moore. You look just like Michael Moore from behind. There's a lot of dapperly dressed... Somebody say, yeah, you do. <laughs> like, yeah, you do. I couldn't contain myself. I had to say, yes, you do. This is an exciting place. I can't tell. It's like, this place is like a... It's like a music space. It's like an art space. It's all it's all fucking mixed into one. There's like a dude. I, that dude has a Rubik's cube, which he's gonna pull right. I mean, you have a Rubik's cube. So I do like you know, like fucking. He's I don't know. Maybe that's part of your thing. I just ruined it. I'm sorry, dude. I might have fucked something up. But the uh, I, I all I have is myself and my my shitty sweatshirt or whatever that I brought with me. I'm I live in Brooklyn. Everybody, give it up for that. <laughs> Brooklyn's an awesome place. I, I, like, I live in a really nice area of Brooklyn. I live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And I, and I love it. I, I do. But my block is very, very scary. Like, everybody in my block has a limp, which I can't really figure out. And apparently there's some kid on my street named Shorty. Because every morning at 5 a.m. I hear this. Hey, Shorty! Hey, Shorty! Hey, Shorty! Hey, Shorty! It's like a ghetto rooster. I'm really not into it. I'm not a fan of that at all. I don't like that guy. We have tons of bodegas on my block, right? You guys know what bodegas are, correct? Because we live in New York and we know what bodegas are. But, like, I recently did a show outside of New York. And you know what a bodega is, sir, right? I had to explain what a bodega was to these people. And I said it like this. I was like, all right, pretty much take everything you have at a Walmart and just cram it for one fourteenth of space. And then just play reggaeton music in the background. And they just have, like, cats and shit walking on the bread. <laughs> they just sell weird items behind the counter, like alpaca meat. Like, yeah, let me get a quarter pound of alpaca meat. I'm going to make myself an alpaca meat sandwich. Nah, Boar's Head brand alpaca meat. <laughs> Ain't falling for that. Because they have a lot of stuff in those places, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? How are you? You doing good? Great. They have, Good. You said that like a dad. You really did. You sound like you're a dad, right? Oh, yeah. That's how my dad would have said it. Great, terrific. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fantastic, John. Today, I went to OTB today. It was expensive. Not you, my dad. Now I'm getting into my own dad issues. That's all I'm saying. But there's so much stuff in these freaking places. There's so much stuff at bodegas that recently I've been falling for this. I've been falling for uh, the bodega impulse shopping. I don't know about you guys. Like, I'll walk into a bodega for, like, a Snickers, right? And I'll walk out with, like, a rubber ball, like, 14 Barbra Streisand CDs, and, like, a month's worth of Goya products that I'm not going to eat.